and welcome. In our lesson today, we are going to discuss part two of cell organelles. So these are the cell organelles that we are going to discuss in our lesson today. So stay tuned. Now the first organelle is the centriole. Now did you know that if it were not for the centriole, bacteria and many other microorganisms will not be capable of movement? Yes, that is actually true. And the reason for this is because centrioles, which are rod-shaped organelles, are responsible for formation of cilia and flagella. What are cilia and flagella? Cilia and flagella are locomotory structures. These are structures that are responsible for movement in microorganisms and in a few cells. So essentially, without cilia and flagella, bacteria and many other microorganisms will not be capable of movement. So number one, the first function of stem cells is that they form cilia and flagella. Now another function of stem cells is that they are responsible for formation of spindle fibers during cell division in animal cells. Let's break that down. What is cell division? Basically, cell division is a process whereby a cell divides in order to form new cells. Now this is a concept that will be discussed in detail in form 3 of biology under the topic reproduction. Now, during cell division, there are certain fibers that are produced. These are known as spindle fibers. So, centrioles form spindle fibers during cell division. Now, this is particular to animal cells. Now, one interesting fact about centrioles is that they are absent in plant cells. So, those are the two functions of centrioles. Let's move on to our next organelle. Now, just a reminder, if you want to take uh, notes or write down any points, Kindly pause the video and do so. Now, our next organelle is, of course, the chloroplast. Now, I know the chloroplast is a common organelle. This is an organelle that is well known by a lot of students. So, chloroplasts are found in some plant cells. Pause. Some plant cells, but not all. Now, the reason is because some plants don't have chloroplast. Now, how would you know whether a plant contains chloroplast or not? Now, a very... Easy visual hint that you can rely on is the coloring of the leaf. Is the leaf green in color? Then, of course, it has to contain chloroplast. Now, the reason is because chloroplast contain a green pigment called chlorophyll. Chlorophyll molecules are green in color, which give the, the leaves their green distinctive color. So, chlorophyll molecules trap light energy for carrying out photosynthesis. Therefore, the function of the chloroplast is to carry out photosynthesis. Now, I will not go into detail regarding the structure of the chloroplast. This is because I have explained it in details in another video called the title or, sorry, the process of photosynthesis. So be sure to check it out. Now, moving on to our next organelle, the endoplasmic reticulum. Now, the endoplasmic reticulum consists of a series of interconnected channels. Now, what do I mean by interconnected channels? This simply refers to channels that are linked to one another or connected to one another. These channels form cisternae. Now, endoplasmic reticulum are of two types. So we have the smooth endoplasmic reticulum and we also have the rough endoplasmic reticulum. Now, these two differ from one another in both structure and function. Now, let's start with the rough endoplasmic reticulum. Now, the reason why it's uh, called the rough endoplasmic reticulum, okay, that's quite a mouthful. So, let me refer to it as the rough ER, simplifying it. Now, the rough ER consists of ribosomes that are attached to its surface. Now, these ribosomes give it a rough-like appearance, hence the name. So, the function of the rough endoplasmic reticulum is to transport proteins. Pause. What are ribosomes? Now, ribosomes are organelles that were discussed in part one of this video. The function of ribosomes is to transport, sorry, is to form proteins. So the ribosomes essentially manufacture proteins and then pass on these proteins to the rough ER. The function of the rough ER is then to transport these proteins to Golgi bodies. Now, Golgi bodies are other organelles that we are going to discuss soon after this. So ribosomes manufacture proteins, they then pass them on to the rough endoplasmic reticulum, which transport these proteins to the Golgi bodies. Now, what about the smooth endoplasmic reticulum? Now, the smooth endoplasmic reticulum are referred to as such because they have, they lack ribosomes, and therefore they have a smooth-like appearance. Now, their function, as expected, is going to be completely different from that of the rough ER. So what is the function of the smooth endoplasmic reticulum? 
Now the function is number one to manufacture lipids. Lipids are essentially fats and oils. So they manufacture lipids and then they transport these lipids. So that is the function of the smooth endoplasmic reticulum. Moving on to our next organelles and these are the Golgi bodies. Now Golgi bodies are tube-like organelles that contain cavities. These cavities are referred to as cisternae. So you find that the cavities are surrounded by a single membrane. Now the cavities inside contain secretions of different sorts. So once the cavities are full, what happens is that a part of the cavities breaks off, forming a vesicle. The vesicle then transports materials to different parts of the cells. So essentially what you have with the Golgi bodies are like, they are like um, the postal service system of a cell. So they receive materials, package them for transport to different parts of the cell. Now, coming back to the endoplasmic reticulum, we, we say that the rough endoplasmic reticulum transport proteins to the Golgi bodies. Now, once in the Golgi bodies, what do the Golgi bodies do? They package the proteins for transport to different parts of the cell. Now, another function of the Golgi bodies is that they secrete manufactured proteins and carbohydrates. And lastly, they also manufacture lysosomes. Now, lysosomes are organelles that are manufactured by the Golgi bodies. What are lysosomes? Lysosomes are the cleanup crew of the cell. Now, before I continue with this, I just want to say this. If you're finding this con uh, content informative, be sure to subscribe, like, and comment if you have any preference or if you have any content that you'd like to be covered. Now, moving back to the lysosomes. So, the lysosomes are the cleanup crew of the cells. This essentially means that they get rid of any trash within the cell. Anything unwanted or damaged is handled by the lysosomes. So the lysosomes contain special enzymes called lytic enzymes. So the lytic enzymes digest any aged organelle, worn out organelle. Sometimes they even digest a whole cell if it's damaged. Why? To get rid of it because it serves no purpose or it could end up actually damaging other parts of the body. That is the function of the lysosomes. The lysosomes are able to do this because they contain lytic enzymes. And that, ladies and gentlemen, brings us to the end of this wonderful lesson. Now, if you want to test your understanding of these concepts discussed, be sure to check out the questions in the description box. See you next time.